map pack in some ways is one of our first full direct Halo game projects. We started thinking about what do we want to do for map packs, when do we want to do them. We definitely wanted to pay full service to the universe created in Reach. One big consideration when we were working was how do we fit this to the fiction. All these maps are unique from the story standpoint of being places that are snapshots around the Reach universe as Reach is falling. You're constantly confronted with the fact that there is this beautiful place, but it's not going to be there forever. Coming up with the sort of spectrum from MapPack is a really straightforward business and at a very high level. You just say, what do we already have and what do we need to kind of flesh things out? Everyone on the right side is working on uh, super top secret stuff I can't talk about. And then everyone over here is also working on super secret stuff. That I can really Certain Affinity, uh, we're an independent developer. It's kind of spread out where we have our Down here in Austin, Texas. In little pods. We're about uh, 50 people now. That team has a lot of experience with the engine, a lot of experience with Halo. Incredible Halo fans, obviously, because so many of them have been involved in the games before. Uh, on Halo 1, I ended up doing the user interface. Halo 2, I shifted to development. On um, Halo 3, I was multiplayer online lead. So right from the get-go, we worked really closely with the publishing team at 343 to identify maps that would make sense in the context of Reach. Example of the overground stuff that we're talking about. It was great, because CA was crazy passionate. Like These guys just showed up with a huge list. And it was more a question of just, okay, well, we can only make so many of these, so you know, let's get to ones that we think kind of fit the fiction, fit the flow. There was a lot of exploration and a lot of collaboration between the two groups. One idea that came to mind was, wouldn't it be awesome to have a multiplayer map that you can see the planet getting glass below you? Condemned takes place high above reach on a, a space station, somewhat decimated by Covenant attack. So when we started Condemned, we wanted to make a map that was really fun for close range, but still had some long range sniping stuff in it. We were looking at Lockout specifically. What are some of the characteristics about Lockout that we think are so fun, and how can we take some of those and do them in a completely new map? Something that really pulls infantry together in a really tight environment. It is a circular map. You know, how do we prevent people from just getting in this habit of going in a circle and never meeting each other? The low grab center, which we experimented with a couple different ideas on, starting this one spot where no matter where you are on the map, you can always get to the action quickly or you can always get across the map quickly. It does change your, your gameplay style and things you need to do. You're kind of a sitting duck when you're sitting out there in the low gravity, floating around. I remember at one point there was a giant energy beam that would come down and if you were standing on that center platform at the wrong time, you would get you know, blasted to smithereens. It was just encouraging people not to go into the center of the map, which is the exact opposite of what we wanted to do, so we just removed it. The earliest stages of the art pass were dark and much more creepy. If it's dark and industrial, it's really easy to get lost. So over the course of development, we decided to brighten this space more and make it still retain a lot of the character we originally wanted, but to make it work. On a really tight map like Condemned, it's critical that the player is able to orient themselves. It actually came down to a lot of art coming in and helping us out and doing color-coded rooms. In the common room, there's actually a big hologram establishing where it's been damaged and that it had been abandoned. Thinking about it like a facility that you would be in, you know, what kind of signage would be around that would help you navigate an airport or a hospital or a military base. One of the effects which we iterated on the most was the shield door effect. We couldn't make it look like a shield from any other shield effect that you have in Halo because that would communicate a certain functionality. We had to design a new one and we went through probably four or five different iterations. Some were way too strong uh, and way too distorted because people want to be able to stand and shoot through the reactor core and so we couldn't do anything that would really obstruct the view. I think it's gonna be really fun when people play it the first time and they think they can go their old camping routines with the shield door and they just get a sticky grenade right in their face and they're gonna drop. At the end, I feel like we have a, a map which has a lot of mood uh, in each of the spaces and really feels unique, not just in and of itself, but to the, the rest of all the maps that are within the Halo franchise. We're looking at the story and the fiction 
And we really want all of our maps to be set in very distinct locales. Islands is a military training preserve where uh, certainly Spartans did some training. You have the guard tower in the middle judging the war games. The Pelican crash landed that had a bunch of Spartan twos on it. The Covenant coming in and glassing the entire planet. The lighting for Highlands was really based around the idea of a forest fire. The closest thing we could come up with to glassing, nearby glassing. In some of the original concepts that we did, we were really going for more of an abandoned training facility. We had vines growing up, the buildings, and lots of overgrown foliage. Originally, the waterfall, which comes down through the middle of the map, flowed over and actually kind of hid the gully where the ghost is in there. While it's very interesting to do that kind of work, it doesn't really line up with the Halo aesthetic. Sometimes it's really good to just go back to a really simple shape and just get players meeting as fast as possible. <laughs> From the ground up, we wanted to make a giant expanse with bases in it and vehicles in it. What's the flow of the vehicles going to be? How are they going to move across the map? And then how, on top of that, are the infantry going to move? We made it big because we wanted it to be very vehicle focused. One of the reasons I think it works well as an objective is you have so many different options to how to get from point A to point B. It's a weird hybrid of Blood Gulch style map kind of as a foundation, but mixed with these much more complex infantry spaces and these tighter spaces and all this verticality. But also having a variety of different locations that you can kind of hide and sneak and kind of make your way through the map and hopefully find the other person before they see you in the sights. Definitely speaks to the halo of yore. new expanded firefight support meant that we definitely wanted to put in another firefight map. Unearth is a really dusty, dry, arid environment. Reach is an industrial world and its main purpose is a kind of military industrial outpost at the far reaches of human space. It's quiet. You can see the tire tracks on the ground where there's been human activity, but it's gone. It's a ghost town. It's a ghost world. So you're seeing this huge open cast mining facility with these kind of step plateaus where the minerals are being extracted from the ground. The complex itself is built right next to a meteor impact, so it made unearthing the titanium really easy. Set, start. Creating a firefight map is a very different experience. We have to account for all these different types of AI of all different sizes, of all different movement types. Phantoms come in and supply the enemies to the outer perimeter. Hunters are almost two times the size of a player. When you go to put a door in, can this giant hunter fit through it? We really wanted to make a map that would allow people to jetpack from multiple levels. We wanted people to be able to armor lock in hallways and block the AI and get them to have to move and do different things. We cater to a wide variety of play styles. If you want to do close quarters combat, there's opportunity for that in there. If you want to just get in a vehicle and run havoc and run over you know, 40, 50, 60 grunts, then you can. They want more vehicle combat and firefight because that just adds a different dynamic than just being a Spartan on foot. There's an inherent like oval racetrack, and we have warthogs. So you put two and two together, you can run laps through the map. So there's literally through the main structure, and then under the bridge, and then back around. You can load up with your buddies, get a rocket launcher, rod, and shotgun, and then run laps and just rack them up. Just mauling through tons of Covenant. It adds this kind of exclamation point on the excitement, fun that is firefight. I hope that when players first play Unearth, that they take a look around and just feel inspired and in awe of the, of the grand scale of things, because it's a huge map. Unearth is the, the calm before the storm. Highlands is the storm itself, you know, with all the Covenant ships and the glass that's happening right there on your doorstep and then with Condemned at the very end, uh, watching it all kind of go up in flames. This is really something being created by 343 and CA and just being created by a bunch of diehard Halo fans. This is our core business. This is all we're doing from now on is Halo games and Halo support and Halo maps.
we have resources, we have people, and we're going to throw those people and those resources and that talent and that effort to the Halo franchise, and it's a huge responsibility. People should understand that we understand that and we respect that, and we're going to do everything that we can. The community is huge for us in helping us shape what it is that we do next. The more vocal the community is, the more they tell us what they like, the more we can make sure that we try to give them that experience.